will be presented by the director, Mr. Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. was to build crossover <laughs> that emergency was to build crossover features on I-35 to get northbound traffic to the southbound side. That opened on June 21st, Sunday, June 21st, uh, which alleviated the need for interstate traffic on the two-lane highway, US 77. Part B is rainfall has caused, has caused Cottonwood Creek to carry causing severe damage to the bridge abutments, flood slabs, and piers on US 70. Westbound Bridge has a Cottonwood Creek located 14.2 miles east of the Jefferson County line of Cardigan. This bridge is currently unsafe to carry normal traffic loads and has been taken out of service by closing the westbound lane of US 70 at this location and featuring westbound traffic to the left lane of the eastbound bridge. So similar to a crossover detour that we did on the right The contractor repaired the apartment, flood slabs and piers is estimated to cost $730,000 and we will be taking bids on this project. Part C, I'm going to change the batteries. <coughs> Part C, rainfall has caused Post Oak Creek to flood and severely undermine the north abutment and approach slab of State Highway. 89 bridge over Post Oak Creek, located 10.1 miles north of State Highway 32 in Jefferson County. This bridge is currently unsafe to carry normal traffic loads and has been taken out of service by closing State Highway 89 at the bridge and detouring traffic 56 miles along US 70, 81, and State Highway 32. The contractor repaired this approach slab and north abutment is estimated to cost $148,500 and bids will be taken on that project tomorrow as well. Part D, rainfall caused a sinkhole to develop on the north side of State Highway 7 due to failure of a storm drainage pipe under the highway at a location 21.2 miles east of US 81 in Stevens County. The sinkhole was discovered on May 23rd and Division 7 personnel determined that the embankment was compromised and the roadway itself was in danger. Division 7 forces have succeeded in temporarily stabilizing the slope and have maintained normal traffic flow on both 
of the driving lanes east and west at this location. However, the roadway shoulder has been closed at this location and permanent repair of the drainage pipe is necessary. The contract to repair the slide area and stabilization of the slope is estimated at $255,000 and bids will also be taken for that location tomorrow. And finally, Part E, rainfall has caused the Red River to flood, resulting in erosion of roadway embankment at State Highway 78 at the approach of the north end of the Red River Bridge in Bryan County. On June 21st, Division II closed the highway to traffic as erosion began to compromise the embankment slope supporting the highway. The failure of the embankment continued across both driving lanes for a length of 120 feet. The contract to repair the approach and stabilize the embankment is estimated to cost $500,000. The department will use expedited bidding and contracting procedures to obtain these contracts for emergency projects. Your approval of the estimated repairs of $2,933,500 is You've heard the presentation by the director. What's your pleasure? Motion to approve. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Do you have any further comments? I do have one further comment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I want to uh, I want to let everybody know how DOTs work. As we went through this flooding situation, I had numerous calls from other DOTs around the country offering their assistance. I took one of them up on their offer and that was the Colorado Department of Transportation, Director Shalen Bath. He called twice and I called him back and said, I need a rock guy. I need somebody who understands mountains. And so on the Saturday before Father's Day, one of their engineers, Ty Ortiz, flew down here and spent the day with Paul Green and uh, Bob Rose and the Division Seven folks and went all over that rock slide area gave us a great understanding of what is needed down there and has really put together the protocol that we're using for this contract. We're going to stay in touch with Mr. Ortiz as we go through this process and continue to get his input, but I just want to offer my appreciation to the Colorado Department of Transportation and Mr. Ortiz for his efforts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You bet. How about you, Mr. Secretary? Do you have any further comment? And like Director Patterson, certainly thank the Colorado DOT. The the uh, governor is going to write a letter to the to the governor of Colorado, thanking him for uh, allowing them to come down and help us. Uh, and and I think it would I'd be a little remiss uh, uh, to not talk about uh, ODOT here. Uh, it, a little bit. Uh, self-serving if Mike does it, but I can certainly talk about that. Um, uh, our men and women uh, over the, over a two-month period uh, at any given time had uh, Casey probably nearly a thousand people out on the uh, on the flood and they were chasing water as it moved downstream and then they'd get roads had closed and they'd open them back up again and then three or four days later a week later we'd have another 500 year flood and 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 close them down again. The chairman here took us and flew us over the area uh, during the first flood, or, or maybe the second flood, uh, not on the third flood, uh, but it it uh, it never ceases to amaze me the the effort that the employees and the engineers and the staff of ODOT uh, give up and go do uh, without thinking of themselves or their families um, to s keep people from hurting themselves. As far as I know, uh, I don't know that you had any fatalities on the highway system of people running off into water uh, that a lot of times came up in the middle of the night, but our people were there and ready to, to react. Uh, in the pictures that you have, uh, uh, maybe Mike, somebody could walk through a couple of those because some of them are unbelievable to me, and I've been around this business quite a while, but uh, certainly the pictures of, of the water overtopping the truss bridge on 99 uh, uh, south of Tish uh, is really uh, unbelievable. Uh, Bob Rose has been down in the in the uh, southern part of the division all his life, or southern part of the state all his life, and uh, 
uh, you know, he can probably talk more about the Red River than anybody else, but that picture of the Red River on I-35 with water up against the bottom of the steel, bottom flange of the steel is, is, um, is really unbelievable itself. I would imagine, and I know Bob had people there and Texas had people there that they were getting very close to closing that thing just because of the, of the risk uh, if the water would have got up on that steel and, and a drift come down the river, uh, what, what a catastrophic event that could create. So, but uh, Mike, I just want to tell you thank you for all your people and your, you and your staff for all the work you've done over the last 60, 70 days uh, of unprecedented flooding in our state and, uh, and keeping people safe and assessing the damage and now the repair starts. But uh, again, we just, I just, Governor wants to thank you for, for the effort that everybody put out and, and she really appreciated it. It has not gone unnoticed. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, if I might, I, I would just add, and I, the comments that I made at the last commission meeting of where we had some of our employees out flagging and there was a tornado bearing down on them. That's the kind of, of effort that they were putting out. They were out there 24 hours a day trying to make sure that it, safe passage for all was achieved. And, and I think we were able to do that. Maybe not to everyone's satisfaction, but we certainly gave it our very best. Uh, to your point, Ms. Ms. Secretary, a couple of these pictures, if, if the commission would look on page three, excuse me, two, the sec it's on page two. I think that really gives a, a sense of what's going on in the Arbuckles and why we have to be ever so careful with what's remaining up on the rock wall. It's not about what's down, it's a what's about to come down if we don't bring it down under our own control. And th that's what the, these contracts are to, to control that dis ascent or descent to the roadway. On page six, you can see where we built the crossovers through the Arbuckles, and yeah. congratulations to Division Seven for getting those plans developed so quickly and the bids taken and the construction accomplished. On, uh, on page 10 of 11 is my favorite, actually. It's on US 271 south of Clayton. That's an emergency that you declared last commission meeting. But it just gives a, a great depiction of what's going on. And then you see on page 12, where 259 in LaFleur County is uh, coming off the side of the hill. But on page 15, and this occurs at every one of these slides, this is the great a, a great depiction of what's actually happening on the side of the ro roadway. You can see where the, where the slope has <laughs> gone down the rest of the hill. And you can only imagine where the, where the road's going to go if we don't do something about that. On page 19, that's our famous picture of the State Highway 99 bridge south of Tishomingo. We haven't declared an emergency there. We haven't, the bridge has been closed for about six weeks. It's not going to reopen. We have further, uh, re we've received further damage. There are bent members in, in the steel. So we are in the process of, uh, have been in the process and will continue to expedite now the replacement of that bridge. Uh, Mike and maybe uh, Casey or Paul can, can say, but one would imagine those pony trusts uh, is probably about 10 feet high, but not, just any guessing? So those pony trusses, which are each on each end of the pull truss, the top of them are somewhere around 10, 11 foot high, one would imagine, at least that. So you can see how deep the water is over the bridge itself. On page 20, you can see this is the, that same bridge and where the, where the debris has, at least one picture where the debris has bent the bridge. And then 
perhaps uh, 23 and 24, where we heard so much about the Red River and I-35. And as the Secretary said, we were watching that bridge ever so closely to determine that between us and TxDOT, we're gonna have to close the bridge. It got closer than we would ever like it to be. Page 25 is one of the emergencies I've asked you to declare this morning on State Highway 78 in Bryan County. And then there's just additional pictures in there I won't go through, but it just, it's just a, what do they say, Reader's Digest version of what ODOT and particularly Divisions 1, 2, and 7 have been dealing with for the last several weeks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Patterson. I know on behalf of the Commission, we appreciate all you guys' efforts, and I certainly do. Uh, it's hard to get to those ATMs and those banks down there when the work roads are closed. Um, <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, what I really appreciate is you guys paying attention to safety while keeping access available. And that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So I would applaud you on that. It also shows how important the Governor's Bridge program is. It's not uh, too early. We were very late and getting that program in place in our state. We had a governor that recognized it needed to be done, and now we can see how important it is, those old bridges, uh, getting rid of them. And, you know, we had a, a very uh, momentous occasion in the last several days to meet with uh, uh, one of our great senators uh, as he introduced the Drive Act to Oklahoma, Mr. Secretary. and you know that it will be so important because we all know uh, that planning is not always uh, a, a real exciting thing to talk about but if we can't plan at ODOT we can't be efficient we can't be conservative with our spending if we can't plan our vendors our contractors can't wrap up you know we can't develop new vendors we all know how long it took to develop this great set of vendors that we have now years and years and years so you know we're in a good position uh, with a, a new uh, proposed bill brings additional spending to our state and it is one of the most conservative things I've seen in a long time out of uh, uh, the federal government uh, but we thank uh, ODOT because I know you guys have been a strong partner in supporting the senator on getting a sensible uh, conservative uh, bill that will allow us to plan properly you know uh, the way I look at it in myself is uh, you know he's a game changer you guys are game changers and our eight-year plan is a game changer uh, but we'll get back to this item unless there are other comments uh, call for the vote please Aye. Mr. Oberlin. Yes. Mr. Burridge. Yes. Mr. Huckabee. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Regan. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, we'll hear a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a, a second. Call the roll. Mr. Fiddler. Aye. Mr. Oberlin. Aye. Mr. Burridge. Yes. Mr. Huckabee. Yes. Mr. Alexander. Yes. Mr. Regan. Yes. We're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>